G R I. Sorry. And what's your name? And then you're I was going to say right? 43, and I was going to say, that's wrong. Okay. So Mary Alice gets to pick first, then Roberta, you, Ramona, and Elizabeth. All right, I want you to pick one of five to give verbal directions on how to do something. Oh. It can be baking a cake, changing a flat tire, cleaning the bathroom, washing a car, or opening a bank account. Baking a cake? Mm hmm Changing a flat tire. Flat tire, okay. Cleaning the bathroom. Ooh. Yeah. Washing a car or opening a bank account. So pick one of those. Okay. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Ooh. I already know where I want to go, but I don't know if it's going to get intense. Because <laughs> she always says so. Yeah, can I tell you about washing the bathroom? <laughs> All right. Do so you want it? cleaning the bathroom? Is yeah. what you're gonna pick. So that's mom. Yes. <laughs> it's gonna be verbal. Okay. So what's the fourth one? Uh, washing a car. Okay. All right, Roberta. Which one do you want? Baking a cake, changing a flat tire, washing a car, or opening a bank account? Baking a cake. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, which one do you want? Changing a uh, tire. <laughs> changing a tire. Alright, so you have washing a car or opening a bank account. Um, opening a bank account. You get to wash a car. Cool. Which, you know, <laughs> which you I want practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want you to give verbal directions and you might use pictures in your mind. But tell us, and if you want to focus on, you know, Deanna, you can, but tell us how to go about cleaning a bathroom verbally. Uh, this is how I would do it. Okay. It's an instruction, right? Yes. <laughs> the first thing that I would do is I would um, concentrate on the commode, that's what you call it? Yes. Commode toilet. Commode. Yeah. <laughs> I would start with the very the ins no, <laughs> I would start at the very inside of it. Uh, not only wiping it, but taking a toothbrush and right underneath that rim, taking some uh, disinfectant, uh, something to clear that yellow junk, and and really with 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 a toothbrush, whatever it takes to get that clean. First and foremost, inside. Um, once I'm satisfied with the way that looks or how clean it is, I would go to the outside under <coughs> every every bolt and screw that's under there and on, on top of that commode area. I would also take that toothbrush and make sure that it's all clean out. I suck at cleaning my bathroom. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because a lot of people just focus on what it looks like just first look. Mm -hmm. And really the most filthiest part is underneath mm -hmm. that lid and inside the commode. Right. Plus on the bottom, men have a tendency to have little mm -hmm. drips here and there, and that is gross. Yes. yes. <laughs> when somebody goes in there and steps on it and you carry it every place else, yeah. um, <laughs> maybe even inside yeah. on top of all uh, the tank itself, there's a lot of uh, like that calculus stuff that accumulates calcium. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, calcium. Mm -hmm. um, that's my instruction. It's pretty deep. Huh? Yeah. Use my way. Put the calcium. <laughs> Once all that's done, the deeper part is that time. You want to leave it nice and shiny. Don't forget to shine the chrome little dilly if it's got one chrome in a flushing. So really shine. And then Smell then. good. That would be the commode, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, underneath at the bottom where the screws are, that also. Mm -hmm. uh, toothbrush to make sure it's all nice and neat and clean. You don't see any yellow or calcium being built up there, it's ugly. From there, I would do the same thing with the bathtub. Make sure that there's no mold growth all over the where the bathtub is. Your shower head, if it's full of that calcium, looks really ugly. I take baking soda and vinegar, and sometimes just put it in a bowl and, and put the put it over the faucet. Mm -hmm. um, that's really important. The whole bottom of the bathtub, also with the toothbrush. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that your mirror is sparkling clean, that your floor is very clean. 
It's like I say about that little drip that men do. <laughs> Sometimes if it's that clean right away, you seem to carry it everywhere. You step in that bathroom. Mm -hmm. That's one of my pet peeves. The you bathroom. forgot this thing, Mom? No, well, it goes for the It goes with the bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the mirror. Everything, I think I've covered everything. Okay. Yeah, and because of those little double. drips, I hate to see a bathroom where they keep the toilet paper on, <coughs> on the floor on the side of the toilet. Oh. Ah. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. So that's the verbal instructions. Um, you're going to do written in a second. Okay. okay. All right. Roberta, what was yours again? Baking a cake. Okay. Okay. Uh, first thing I would do is preheat my oven. Okay, then I would go get all my ingredients, start my, my measuring cups, my spoons, my bowl, can put it out there, two bowls. I would measure um, my dry ingredients first and put them all in a bowl and start with the flour, the biggest amount to the smallest, kind of mix it. Then I go to the wet ingredients. And it has eggs. I start with the eggs, add the milk, whatever. Um, usually, I dry ingredients. I'll, if it calls for sugar, I add it to the wet to help dissolve it. Um, oh, let me go back. <laughs> before, before I, after I preheat the oven, then I, get, I might get my pan ready. Yeah. Flour, wax paper, whatever, and then I go and do the dry ingredients, the wet ingredients. And after that's done, then I will pour the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients a little bit at a time, mixing it after each. And then when that is uh, mixed the way it should be, you'll make sure you don't mix too much and, or not too little. Okay. So then, uh, then I'll pour it in my pan and uh, put it in the oven and put my timer on. Okay, so you're going to write written instructions too on how to make a cake. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, and then yours is changing the flat tire, right? Oh, am I having a blowout? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. If you had a blowout mm -hmm. on the freeway, you want to get over to the safest spot you possibly can. Okay. Stop your engine. Pull your emergency brake up. Get your jack out. Your lug nut to take it off. I have a star. And um, jack it up to where it needs. Take off your lug nuts. Pull your tire off. Uh huh. Get your other spare tire or your emergency donut. Take it out, put it on, and do your lug nuts like an X. It just depends on. Mm -hmm. If you have four lug nuts, you're going to do it in an X. Mm -hmm. You tighten them up the same way you put them on, and then you just start tightening as much as you can. You tighten a little bit at a time, so otherwise it'll get off balance. All right. And then make sure it's nice and tight. And then you lower the jack, put the, the tire back in, put your other equipment back in, and you're good to go. Good to go. <laughs> All right, so you'll write yours down too. <clears throat> We're doing something here, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, uh, Ramona, what was yours? Opening a bank account. Is it like my first time? Sure, <laughs> you're not you're telling someone how to do it and you've never opened a bank account. Okay. Um, it's your first paycheck. <laughs> you go to the bank with it. You you sit in the lobby area and they'll call your name, or they'll call you. They'll call your name. And um, you go over there and you give them your information, your your name, your social, your birthday. <coughs> um, they, they they type it all in. You give them the check. And they check if you if, if you can open a bank account or not. They check your credit, and then you deposit your your um your check in there, and then they 
they give you a booklet of information of, of their bank and, and what all that stuff is. They give you a temporary um, account card or credit card or whatever, debit card. And, um, and you sign your name on a contract or application. And, um, and you just, that's it. Now, do you have to have specific documents or identification so that oh, you can go yes, yes, yes. and you yeah. don't have them? They're, we're sorry, we can't help you. You have to come back. Right, you need an ID. <laughs> okay, so you'll write your instructions down to you. All right, washing a car. <laughs> Ugh. Um, <laughs> okay, first things first. Do you want to pay for it and go take it to the No, machine? you're going to get your own bucket, get your sponge, <laughs> <coughs> and do it in your front yard. Well, th this was, this was, this was my, you know, introduction in you totally. <laughs> <laughs> or you can be cheap like me and do it in your own yard. No, thrifty. 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 <laughs> And do it in your own yard. Just depends on how I'm feeling that day. It's once a year that I do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got your bucket, and if you're me, you don't have soap <laughs> for that. So you actually have to go buy it first. And you buy your soap and your scrubby things, and you're like, well, <laughs> I'm already going to be washing the car and being all fancy and stuff. Why not get some wax stuff too? So I buy that, and then I'm like, dang, that's expensive. I debate on the wax stuff. <laughs> then I finally pick the cheapest one. <laughs> but then it says you need special towels. So I buy those two. I take my things. I go to my parents' house because they have an actual driveway and a real water hose. <laughs> I do not. So I take my car and I park it close to where I can reach it with hose. And I spray it down. And I'm like, cool, that's fun. And I get my soapy water stuff in there and begin to scrub. Then I get a little anal about it. I'm like, well, this is not coming off. And I get frustrated and scrub it harder. I go and find a scrubby brush because obviously these little rack things just are not cutting the trick, right? So I find a scrubby brush and I scrub that and I notice that the rims are dirty too and I'm like, wow. So I do those. By then I'm tired. But I know I have to wash like that stuff off. So I spray it off. Hopefully someone's around for me to spray them because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> then I play with the water and watch it make rainbows and poof it. Then I'm like, oh, I guess I should probably dry it now. So I drive my car, notice I've missed spots, get frustrated, because if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. Go back and do the spots that I had missed, wash that off yet again, and then I dry my car, and I get the wax stuff, and notice that the wax stuff I got, you're supposed to use on a wet car. <laughs> so after I've taken the time and Soiled many towels. Get a good try. I then whack like let it down and apply the wax stuff. Which don't buy the cheap wax stuff. <laughs> Just buy the more expensive one. It works so much better. <laughs> so you wax your car. It dries funny and there's spots. You get frustrated with that, so you go and buff those out. <laughs> and you notice the inside of the car is dirty, but that's a different teaching. Yeah. So I won't teach you on that today. <laughs> Mine usually is. <laughs> and finally, that wax stuff and wash stuff just uh -huh. does not do very good things to your windows. Um, so you have to clean those separately. After you've done all that, your dad backs his truck into the side of your car that's been freshly washed and painted. And you decide that washing your car is stupid, and you never want to do it again. The end. The end. <laughs> <clears throat> That's why you only wash yours once a year, because that was a lot of trouble. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, now, take just a few minutes, don't be very detailed, 
but like one through whatever, and write down exactly what you have to do for each of your topics, step by step, and see you doing it too. And Elizabeth, do not go through the whole shenanigans <laughs> of buying products. Okay, you've already got the products in hand. <clears throat>
I just go to the one where you have to like put quarters in and you have the hose. I do that with this money. I'm gonna spend six bucks and let someone else do it. Well, I never spend six bucks. I usually do. I usually spend like three. Because I do it quick. I'll turn it out to spray it down. There's some so much. That's okay. And you go by making it with all the weight, you have to give it a good rinse to get the dust. Sand out. Well, just yeah. use a foamy brush off your car. As soon as you drive out, the wind blows and it's like, <laughs> stop all over it. So, do you need a <clears throat> soul healing from you washing your car and your dad running <laughs> into it? Maybe. <laughs> it's just been painted and everything. I was so sad. <laughs> because this one I try to condense it to make it a little bit okay. less. And then when you were giving the steps, um, verbal and written, did you see yourself doing it picture-wise in your imagination on either one, both, or none? Yes. I see myself doing it. In, in both the written mm -hmm. and the verbal? Mm -hmm. Okay. So verbal was easier for you and you felt more organized? Yes. Okay. More condensing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roberta, on yours, did you feel more organized and that you were getting each step in order verbally or more written? Um, on the written, I had something that I probably lived down. Okay, verbally. and then did you see yourself in both of them doing it or? I saw it in verbally. I, said, I saw myself when I did it verbally. But written, you didn't. That's interesting. Yeah. But when you were writing it, you remembered things that you would have left out if you did it verbally. Yeah. Okay. I remember something I had left out when I did it verbally. Okay. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Both, both, both. <laughs> so you both saw it verbally, but you do. So did you have more? Because um, you were pretty detailed. No. In your That's instructions pretty much verbally. The same. Yeah. Verbally and then. Okay. What about you? Did you? Um, see yourself doing it? Did you find that you had other things you remembered when you wrote it or verbally? Um, I remember more, I organized it better um, written. Okay. And um, I visualized it both ways. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I felt there was more impact verbally. Oh my gosh, we're not asking about impact. <laughs> <laughs> Organizing it, I mean, well, it's washing your car. Well, no, I just, there's uh, steps, because I had washed my car and forgot something. I had to go in the middle of washing it back into the house. I so, wondered if yeah. she was going to remember so, the she said. Oh, I <laughs> right. did steps. However, there was yeah. one key step. Oh, show off car to that friend who always picks on you because your car is dirty. <laughs> I'll be waiting. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, now, did you see yourself in both, or were you just spouting off out of your abundance of words and imagination? And, you know? Oh, I was just telling you the last time I watched it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry and mine, I noticed, though, as I was writing it down, that I forgot verbally two really important points. Okay. Most important that I didn't verbalize. Okay. But when I wrote it, it came to mind. came to you. So here's a couple things from this exercise I want you to take away. Number one, you could probably give instruction 
um, with minimal notes on things you really know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. verbally <laughs> written, you're good to go. Um, so that's really good recall. Um, so on things that you don't know, um, or they're maybe a little new to you, probably have some notes, but you probably don't need a lot. Yeah, you and know if I, mean? I don't understand, I'm very good about asking questions. Yeah. Until I can understand it. Yeah. So now with you, um, it's interesting that you saw it one way, but you didn't the other, mm -hmm. right? And um, so on your, like, when you put together your notes for a message, I wouldn't, um, I would allow the detail to come out as you're talking um, and see how you do with that because you felt obviously more comfortable sharing, cleaning the bathroom verbally, mm -hmm. but you still needed your notes to write it step by step because you remembered a couple crucial yeah. things. So with you, you might keep your notes very simple and short and rely on the Holy Spirit bringing things to your mind as you talk. Okay. So like your main points, hit them. Rely on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, because you might get bogged down in too many notes. Right. Okay. Too much detail. Yeah. yeah. So that, that kind of interested me um, with you. Because actually, um, on my written one, the two points that I that I didn't mention uh -huh. was like the most right, the important. most important. Yeah, and that happens. Uh, giving verbal instructions um, are a little bit harder for me because I can really like I have to picture it and go step by step. Written's easier. You know, I can write it down very short, condensed, exactly what you're supposed to do. Um, and so, uh, and, and being visual too, like a lot of people that are preachers are very visual. They can, they can whip it out and have detail. Like I can totally picture Elizabeth being retarded and having to buy, you know, special car soap when we were all used up and her getting upset and then her dad hitting her car. Like you can totally picture, right, everything. Where an instructor, a teacher, they have main points of their notes, and, and then usually they're a little bit more detailed. So we'll see what you do. It'll be interesting to see. So, Roberta, with you, it seems like you need notes to make sure you don't leave out important things. Um, but you seem to be okay with maybe some detail in your notes and verbal detail. Well, if picturing it, <coughs> can't be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, it's something I do, so mm -hmm. step, I can see myself step by step with you. Yeah. yeah, like my notes, when I prepare a message, I mean, they're very detailed. Um, and I can glance at them, and it reminds me of things, but some stuff I have to read. Um, but when I first started, I just made minimal, minimal notes. Um, and then I'd have to divide up every thought. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And I still do that. Do you do it like bullet notes? I do. Bullet points and bullet notes. So you guys will have to figure this out on your own. Like some people don't need notes. They can just get a topic, get some scriptures, and take off. You know, me, no. Unless I'm under a preacher of money, I can't do that. I've got a question. When you talk about minimal notes and stuff like that, um, does that equal or does that define PowerPoints? That you should have PowerPoints? Some people need PowerPoints. Um, because, like, I don't know if you noticed, um, Mary Alice and Elizabeth were very detailed mm -hmm. and wordy. Lots yeah. of words. Well, that's okay unless your wordiness is messing you up when you try to translate it from your notes into telling people. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'll just show you guys. Um, I don't want to do this Saturday's cell clinic. So, let me bring up the... Um, so the clinic, <clears throat> the very first one, and I can even pass this around, you guys can look. Um, so like I had the thought, uh, this was my first thought that I wrote down, I think we can safely say that Jesus is one of, if not the most wounded men in history, yet he was most stable emotionally and mentally. Okay, so that was bullet point number one, uh -huh. right? And then A, he never reacted. B. He never said words based from current wounding, past wounding, or offense. C. He never had doubt or unbelief and was in fact amazed when he saw unbelief. 
and D, he never sinned when angry. So if you pass it around, I'm going to show you two examples. You can see I have a one thought, and then I divide every thought related under it, which helps. And I even divide my notes up by subtitles. Mm -hmm. So that helps me transition. But for the firmness, it's totally different. And I'll show you that in a second when you guys are done um, passing around. So you'll need to figure out how you best work. So you'll either have very minimal notes because you'll be able to recall and flow in that easily. Or you're going to have detailed notes, but you'll have to split them up by a bit. Or I'll show you the furnace ones in a second. So that's what, that was the purpose of this exercise. So could it also depend on how familiar, how familiar, familiar. you are yeah. with yes, the subject yeah. that you're yeah. doing? Like, yeah. are you really familiar with changing a tire? Right. You know? Yeah, that's a big key. And that's why it's kind of good on your first messages to get, you know, something that you're you're familiar with. Uh, and the Holy Spirit doesn't mind that at all. Um, now, I've had him download entire messages to me that I hadn't even studied. I just sit down and start typing what he's telling me. Um, so that can happen. But he's okay with you guys using something you're really comfortable with. So that is how to do the soul clinic. The reason I do the soul clinic notes like that is because um, I want to make sure that I don't have to just read the notes. I can look down and hit on particular thoughts. That's, see, that's kind of what I'm thinking might work for you. I can hit specific thoughts and then expound. Okay? Yeah. Now let me show you the furnace. Um, furnace is totally different, and I can't tell you why. I have no idea. So I don't want to do this Fridays. Well, that wouldn't work because I was totally off that one, because Holy Spirit. All right, let's look at the dominant faith. Okay, <clears throat> if you look at the notes from the dominant faith, it's totally different. It's like I wrote a paper. There's a hard, There's not any bulletin hardly at all. Is it? Maybe the difference is because it's more personal at the soul clinic, and you want to get specific deeper, things. Well, I don't specific know. Specific and deeper situation because I go pretty Do you deep study the, the same way yeah but I mean it's no, more personal I bet that's it at the mm -hmm. clinics it, it is I'm not saying it's not deep at yeah I know what you mean it's more um, it's more personalized right right that might be on it. the subject that you're but I think you with. just hit on something uh, too um, because the way I study with the furnace is totally different than the soul clinic with the soul clinic I am researching and gathering stuff the Holy Spirit leads me to and putting them in notes where with the furnace so he's dictating to you dictating right. in your writing and then with the furnace I'm literally studying my own personal study and I'm okay. typing my thoughts as I go and that actually becomes a message so what you guys are reading in the furnace notes is my own personal Jesus show me yourself teach me things I've never seen and I'm literally writing what he's telling me and showing me. So it's my own personal journal. So in a way, that's even yeah. deeper, in a sense, than the soul clinic. It could be well, it's a, a different target. Yeah, yeah different, mm -hmm. different ways. Because mm -hmm. at the soul clinic, they're reaching out to people. Right. And, the, and it really could be a target, too. Because in the soul clinic, I'm preparing for other people. Although I can be impacted, right? Because I learned a lot when yeah. I do well, this. Okay. Is it but the furnace is my teaching. personal study. More of a teaching at the soul clinic. Can, can be. My roots keep getting Just out. because of <laughs> the detail and the breaking down. And the, and the furnacing sure. is so real because it's my own yeah. study well, yeah. that um, when I'm instructing in it, I can literally follow the paragraphs as if I just sat down and wrote it. Well, I noticed too because at first, you know it so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed too at first you don't read from your notes as much. You glance at it. I glance at but it. But at Soul Clinic, you do read from your notes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think you'll find maybe something to take away from this is like with you on your notes, you had like little note cards, right? And you had, I think, no. or a paper no. is on is in your computer. Mm -hmm. 
you had um, like brief notes, but you actually needed more. Mm -hmm. You needed to, like, for example, on the Soul Clinic ones, I'll put example, and then I will put a brief synopsis of a personal story or example that applies to the subject matter. That would have helped because you um, could have your scripture, your thoughts, and maybe a personal story when you saw that happen in your life. And that would have given us more content. So with you, you need more content in your notes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, and it might depend on the topic. So here's something yeah. you can take away. The more you have said it and it's personal to you, the easier it will be to get it across. Yeah, but you might need some really good detailed notes. And you may not read them. I mean, it's, there's, it's boring just uh -huh. someone reading their notes the whole time, you know. Like they're reading a paper. You can just hand it out. People can take it home. But it can help you stay focused. Uh -huh. So it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting <coughs> to see how your notes look when you come. How your next time having more meat on that. I noticed like, when, when I did the <coughs> class, I had an easier time just having little jots down, like, okay, um, if, you know, and then I would just speak naturally, like I was just telling them about stuff, you know. When I had my, like, really detailed notes, I felt pressured to read, like, to keep on track with what I had, to make sure you got everything yeah. in. Yeah, when you had minimal notes here, you went through it in seven minutes, and it was very, very fast. Mm -hmm. So in a preaching or teaching the situation, it might help. Just try it. Let's see. You know, let's, let's hone in how you do your notes and stuff and how you instruct from them. So you seem to be really good with your note cards. I think with you having them in different, you know, like where I have a title, you know, like I've got, well, not in the furnace ones. Yeah. I typically don't. But in um, the Soul Clinic, so I would have, uh, I'd have the title, um, How to Overcome Traumatic Thought Patterns. And then I'd have lots of stuff there. And then the first title might be, What is Trauma? Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. you might, even on your first note yeah. card, put that title. Mm -hmm. So I hope this helps you guys inform yes. your notes how you do better, verbal, or writing them down. So what would you, what would you advise me? Because... That's always been a pattern for me, that I just have too many words, I have too much detail. How can I learn to condense that and still bring forth the main I, thought? Um, I can send you my soul prosperity notes, and I think that's what you need okay. to do. Um, they should be no longer than a page. Because even, even in giving testifying about the goodness of God and what He did for me every week when I first converted. Mm -hmm. You know, there was one brother in, in particular that I'll say, you know, I love that you're so excited. I love what you said about learn to condense it. You just say too much. I would definitely condense your notes. And um, and I would separate, like when you have your initial thought, I would separate each thought that supports it into its own bulletin point, even if you write it down. Okay, tell me that again. So have your initial thought. Initial thought. <clears throat> yep. Okay. And then every supporting thought be its own bulleted point. Supporting thought? Mm-hmm. Be its own point bullet? Bulleted point. Okay. Yeah. Even in short sentences, or a word, or a phrase, it doesn't matter. Just something to trade Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ramona, how do you think you'll be? Do you think, as far as your notes, just from this exercise, do you need more notes or less notes? Um. I think I need more notes. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're getting ready. And uh, and then see if y'all do them in paragraph form or bulletin. Okay. Yeah. All right. You guys did good. This was kind of a long class. But y'all did really good. And I hope it helps y'all in forming your notes and stuff. Probably really helpful. For, for myself, it's real hard. Um, I don't know why. But it's real hard for me to have contact, eye contact. For very okay. long either. Okay. It, it just kind of like <clears throat> blows me away. Even when I'm conversing with somebody, if I have complete eye contact, it's just like my thought just goes bye bye. You know, it okay. becomes something else. So, what I would recommend is um, like, and it can take practice, bounce. 
So you don't want to get too long of eye contact with anybody. So maybe you glance up, <coughs> look at Elizabeth, and then go back to your notes. Great. Because what's really strange is when I'm receiving. Because I can look at you at the furnace, and it's like I'm, not only am I looking at you, it's just like I'm just eating everything that you're telling well, me. Well, part of it is the, the people that are being ministered to need to watch the minister. Mm -hmm. That's how you pull. Mm -hmm. And um, so you get your attention and following the minister around. That's how you get the most. And uh, so, yeah, that's important. So on yours, you might make a note that when it's time for you to do your message, that um, you just quickly glance and then go back to your notes and then glance and go back to your notes. And then even when I first started, I'd have my thumb where my next spot was. Oh. Mm, yeah. You know, I would do that. I think a big problem too was me having it on the computer. Like, that was hard for me. Like, if you notice, even at my house, I was reading that thing, I kept getting lost on it. Mm -hmm. I need to, like you said, I need to have it like somewhere where I can keep my like track. On well, and sometimes that. having a pen in your hand, <clears throat> you know, and then often what I would do when I first started is I'd print out my notes and I'd read over them and I'd do a highlighter and I'd highlight specific things I really wanted to target and I'd put an asterisk. You know, however you need to um, put your notes together um, to get what you really want to get across, do it. Mm -hmm. it. It really helps. It. I had to learn to transition to an iPad mm -hmm. because I'm so used to paper. And then this one, I couldn't have my highlighted parts, mm -hmm. and so I really had to figure out how to get it to where I would really emphasize. So I have bold and I have all caps. So when you see like notes yeah. when I give them to yeah. you, the all caps and the bold is me yeah. to remind me to emphasize that, not necessarily for you guys. So however you have to do it, get real comfortable with your notes and and, uh, and you'll definitely, you know, hone in your skill. Mm -hmm. And how much time are we in now? Fifteen minutes. Would you oh, probably like want long? long? Time. How long are we thinking for some people it's be long, for some it's not. Yeah. I think um, Roberta is a natural teacher and so she had quite a bit more uh, to say. And, mm -hmm. and like cut it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there is so much more. Yep. Yeah. There and it's so hard to cut it off too. When you're done, it's hard to cut it off. Because I wrote it out, and then I went and condensed it to the cards. Yep. And that is something and you can practice. figure out what. Yeah. Practice your message before you bring it. Because, and when Kent was in speech class, he had a three-minute speech. I said, Kent, you need to practice mm -hmm. it. And his speech was going to be how to make pancakes. It took him 20 seconds. <laughs> Literally. And he's done. And he had to keep talking. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, practice it. Put a timer on and see how long it takes you to get through. And is this going to be actually titled preaching or teaching? No, it's going to be teaching. We're doing teaching. teaching okay, right okay. Now. Mm -hmm. Teach. So organized thoughts with a specific aim. Okay. Yeah. All right. You want to turn that off? Or?